Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some brooding hero romance recommendations for you. Baby, baby. I love a good brooding hero. It's like a grumpy, gruff man who has a total, complete softy for his woman. So good. I actually have two other brooding hero romance rec videos. I'll link them down below for you if you want to check them out. Um, so here are 10 more recommendations that have brooding heroes in them. First, we have A Nordic King by Karina Halley. This is the Hello Lovely Box edition. Isn't it so pretty? Um, but this, ooh, this is what the original cover looks like if you remember books based on their covers. Sometimes I do. You know? Anyway, uh, this one is perfect. Also, I love the man cover. I want to get a copy of this one too, but this one is also really pretty. Our heroine in here, she is a nanny looking for a nanny position. She goes to, oh, I think there's a bookmark in here. Oh, it is. Oh, it's from the book. It's a quote. What a rare and beautiful thing you are. I love that. I totally forgot that was in here. Okay, I need to put that in my bookmark collection. I normally don't keep the bookmarks in books, but anyway, so our heroine in here, she is looking for a nanny position um, and she ends up going to this job opportunity, this interview, um, and she realizes it's for the King of Denmark's daughters. And right when he sees her, he's like, no, absolutely not. And it's because he is very attracted to her. Things go out the window though, <laughs> when his daughters meet her and they are totally obsessed with her. And he's like, well, Darn it, I gotta, I gotta hire her now. Um, and so they are forced to be in forced proximity with each other. She thinks that this guy does not like her when in actuality he is mooning over her. Okay, he is, um, but he is very broody, very gruff, grumpy. And he's also dealt with some things in his past that have had him become this way. Um, he is a widower, his wife died recently. The whole situation about that was very traumatic and troublesome for him and you figure out what it is when you read the book obviously. So heroin in here is trying to help him through that and help him be a single father and yeah it's a little bit complicated too because he is a king and she is much younger than him. Is it age gap romance? And yeah I love this one. The hero in here is very broody but in the end he would do it for his woman. Next is a recent read of mine, which is Fractured Sky by Katherine Cowles. This is book number five in the Tattered and Torn series. You technically can read this one as a standalone, all these books in the series as a standalone, but you get the more, but you get more out of it, sorry, if you read all of them in order. So this is the last book. And I feel like the wait was totally worth it because this book was absolutely perfection. This is the romance between Shiloh and Ramsey. You've been reading about Shiloh throughout the entire series. In the first book, you read about her getting kidnapped when she was a kid and she still has some residual effects from that, some trauma from that experience. And she really finds her escape in riding her horse. And she also escapes to Ramsey's estate not a state. I'm so sorry. Ranch. <laughs> it's not an estate. It's a ranch. Uh, goes to his ranch because he is a horse trainer and horse rehabilitator. And she just sits there on the edge of his property and watches him help horses. And Ramsey has gone through some things in his life too. He was in an abusive household. His stepfather was very abusive to him growing up and his mother died. Um, her, his stepfather killed her and he pinned the murder on her son, Ramsey. And so he was in jail for quite a long time for a crime he did not commit. And so when he was finally released, he has decided to make his life better by just working and helping out horses. He claims that he's not good with people. He's not a people person. He'd rather just be alone on his ranch with his horses and that's it. That's all he's good for. That's what he thinks. But then Shiloh comes in and breaks down all of his walls and proves him otherwise that he is a people person for the right people. And it just so happens to be her and her family and their friends and these two boys that come and help out on the ranch. Like, oh, it is beautiful. Ramsey is definitely broody and a grump, but he totally softens for Shiloh and it is beautiful. He's still broody to other people. It's kind of like, I hate everyone in the world but you is Ramsey. Next is a classic, okay, in the romance world. <laughs> this is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I read this a long time ago um and like the first year i want to say on booktube so that's like five years ago maybe this is the romance between lucy and joshua and it is a workplace enemies to lovers romance they are both rivals and are vying for the same job position they are total opposites it's an opposites attract lucy is very much like go with the flow kind of person has a messy desk has little knickknacks everywhere like total opposite of joshua um who 
has a pristine, clean, neat desk, needs everything to be in the correct order at all times. And Lucy is more like carefree. And Joshua's not like that. <laughs> and they do not like each other at all. But in this book, when they're trying to vie for the same position, they have to be close to each other and attend the same, the same events together. They let their hatred grow into something more. They tip the line between love and hate, okay? Josh in here is very much perceived as being very broody and gruff. So he's like a staple brooding hero. I can't believe I haven't talked about him yet in one of my previous videos. Next is Misadventures on the Night Shift by Lauren Rowe. This is a fairly short, it's like under 300 page romance between our heroine who is Abby. She's a hotel clerk and she works um, the front desk in evening shifts. She then checks in this guy named Lucas who happens to be her childhood like celebrity crush. He is a famous singer, guitar player, and he is staying at the hotel. And she kind of stands up to him at one point. I think he's smoking a cigarette in the hotel lobby. And she comes up to him, basically takes it out of his mouth and sh like crushes it on the floor because she's like, there is no smoking in here. I've already told you before, you're done. Like you're cut off. And he's like, wow, this woman is standing up to me. And so the reason why Lucas is in this hotel is because he needs to get a change of scenery because he's kind of lost his muse for writing songs. And he starts to get his muse back the more he talks to Abby. So Lucas in here is very broody, very grumpy, gruff, just like all the other guys in this video, I need to stop saying that, is not the nicest at first when, we, when he first meets Abby. So Abby kind of like puts him in his place. <laughs> if we're looking for a fantasy romance, I have Master of Crows by Grace Draven. Talk about brooding hero, Silhara. Oh my gosh. This is the romance between Martise and Silhara. So Martise here is a, um, I think a slave to these people called the Conclave, which is basically kind of like the government in this fantasy world. And they tell her, okay, we'll end your servitude sentence or whatever. If you go undercover to figure out more about mas the Master of Crows, which is Silhara. So she goes undercover to be the Master of Crows' apprentice to learn magic from him. But in actuality, she's gonna learn secrets about him while she's staying there. Little does she know the moment that Martise is put in his house, Silhara already knows what she's there for. He knows that she's trying to be a spy. And he's like, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so he's like the meanest to her and just like bullies her with like magic. Like, oh my gosh, I love them. Their bantering is fantastic. Silhara does not want to fall for Martise at all, but he cannot help himself. He cannot help but fall for this strong, capable woman. Because Martise does not want to do this. She does not want to do this to this man. She does not want to spy on him, but she has no other choice. Like, what would you do to gain your freedom for being a slave? And so I think the truth is finally revealed and the two of them team up to try and defeat the Conclave. This is a fantastic fantasy romance. Grace Draven is just amazing. If you've never read any of her books, please do. She writes amazing brooding heroes, which is why I'm going to talk about another one of her books, which is Phoenix Unbound, another fantasy romance. This is the romance between Jolene and Azarion. So Jolene in here is a fire witch, but no one knows that. In this empire, this fantasy land empire, um, magic is banned. You're not allowed to have magic. That's a no, no, you will be killed. But every year the empire sacrifices a woman from each village, like puts them on the pyre on a stake and sacrifices them. No one knows though that Jolene has been disguising herself as a new woman every year to protect the women from her village. So none of them actually die because she is kind of like fire retardant. Like she <laughs> does not burn because um, she has fire magic. So she's able to not be dead from it and so she disguises puts a glamour on herself every year i think for the past like six years she has been doing this to save the lives of the women in her village then azarion is a gladiator a gladiator slave in this empire and he is the first one to ever notice that jolene has been here before he realizes what she is and who she is and he decides to escape from his servitude from his gladiator ways like escape break out of jail basically and kidnap Jolene to take her back to his people. Um, Cause he thinks that this magical woman can help put him back on the throne of his kingdom. And so this is a kidnapping romance. <laughs> I feel like both of them are very grumpy, very broody, kind of like if you've read about Aelin and Rowan in the Throne of Glass series, very much that vibe where they're like in air of fire, where they're out to like tear each other's throats out, you know? 
<laughs> so I love this one, but definitely both of them are very broody. Next, I have Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. I have a physical copy of this. I can't find it. My library is completely messy. Books are shoved everywhere right now, so I can't find books. I'm so sorry. But this is a historical romance, obviously. And in this Castles of Our After series, they're all complete standalones. However, um, they have the commonality of like a woman has been inherited, like has been given a castle by a long lost relative. Izzy in here is our heroine who has inherited said castle. She goes to the castle to make it her own, just to realize that there is a man living there that claims that this castle is his. This is his home. What are you doing here? Um, and they're trying to figure out who actually owns said castle now. Um, and so they're both living there and forced to be with each other. The hero in this book is one of the most broody, grumpy heroes I've ever met, ever. He is not the nicest at first, but he does soften for our heroine, obviously. He has dealt with a lot in his life. He is blind and he has faced a lot of ridicule and just been depressed because of his life situations now. Um, he was injured in, I believe, battle and um, he is now not able to see. And so he's dealing with the trauma and the pain that comes with from being injured like that. And also just living with a disability is hard. It's so hard. There's more to this story, but our hero in here is just fantastic, okay? I love him. I loved him from the moment we met him. I think like she walks into the castle on a dark stormy night and she ends up seeing the silhouette of this man and she faints. <laughs> And she's like, she's scared, she faints. And he like scoops her up and um, takes care of her. And it is so good. I love this one. Another Tessa Dare is A Lady by Midnight, which is a Spindle Cove romance book. This one's a little bit fuzzy in my brain, but I think this one's about Kate, who is like this piano teacher in Spindle Cove, but then she realizes that she's this long lost lady. Like she's titled. Our hero in here, uh, Samuel, is a part of the militia of Spindle Cove. And he has been trying to take care of secretly, secretly take care of Kate um, and has been pining over her for a while. But he's not the nicest to her. He's very broody, very standoffish. When she tries to talk to him, he wants nothing to do with her. And so she thinks that he hates her when in actuality he does not. He just doesn't want to get close to her and develop more feelings. And that's all I can really remember from this one. But I do remember really loving it. Oh, we have a staple, okay? The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. Isn't this cover just so good? I love all the covers for this book. They're amazing. If you have not heard about this historical romance yet, pick it up, pick it up, okay? Um, this is the romance between Ian and Beth. So Ian in here is, um, is he the son of a duke? What is he? I don't know. He's the son of this like very prevalent family in Scotland, I'm pretty sure. And um, he has many brothers. Okay, and he just was recently let out of an insane asylum. Um, his father recently passed and his father was the one who put him in an insane asylum. His brother inherits like his father's name after he dies, goes to the insane asylum to basically get his brother out of there. He knows his brother should not be there, but he couldn't get him out before his dad died. Anyway, he has been dealing with some stuff. So he's been in an insane asylum because his dad thought he was cuckoo pants, when in actuality, Ian's autistic. And in this time period, no one knew what autism was. Ian, one of his special interests, one of his very many like hobbies is collecting this fine china ware, like in pottery. And he collects it and is able to authenticate it like so easily. And one of, I believe the buyers who wants to come buy one of the pieces he's collecting ends up like, what's the word for it? Boasting about the fact that he just got engaged to a very rich widow, but she's gonna be like his side piece. Like she doesn't know that they're gonna get married and he has this house of women that he's just gonna go be with, you know? And Ian is like, that is not right. Like you should not, like, like he should not do that to a woman. Like that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound right. And so he goes in search of this woman to tell her like, this dude you're marrying is shady. And so he finds her at this opera. I believe it's an opera. And he sees her, eyes completely locked with her and is immediately like, I want her. She'll be mine. So he confronts Beth, tells her what is going down with this dude. And is like, don't worry though, because I want you. Like, can I have you? I would like you please. <laughs> and so Ian in here is very upfront, very blunt about that. And he seems like my summary makes him seem like the sweet, caring man. He can be, but he's also very broody on the outside, which is like perfect. Like his whole personality is perfect. Okay. I love him. I love her for how much he, she loves him. Like they are soulmates for forever. I love them. And the last book that I'd love to mention is an alien romance. 
obviously, <laughs> this is Willow's Beast by Ruby Dixon. This is the third book, a part of her Ice Home series. This looks a little weird, okay? So some people who are not used to Ruby Dixon covers, it looks a little weird, okay? But <laughs> in the Ice Home world, which is a spinoff to Ice Planet Barbarians, it's just a different group of people who have crashed on this ice planet called Not Hoth. Anyway, on this planet, there are human women who have crashed, but also aliens from other places who have crashed. So Gren, our hero in this situation, is one of said other aliens. He used to be a gladiator, um, so he doesn't get off on the best foot with the other people on the planet because when he gets out of his like sleeping cryo chamber pod, he thinks that he's been put in an arena. And so he tries to attack everyone thinking that they're all gladiators themselves. And he's chained up against a rock or a tree for a very long time because people are scared of him. But Gren is scared himself. He does not have a language chip like translator in his head and so he has no idea what people are saying he doesn't know that these people aren't out to kill him um and so willa is one of the human women who does not like the way that gren has been treated she doesn't like that he's been tied up and so she goes to untie him and he kidnaps her and <laughs> takes her with him as he runs away and they find out that they're resonance mates but there is still this language barrier between the two uh gren is very growly and gruff but a total teddy bear. He's a teddy bear for Willa. Um, I love them. And anyone who comes close to her, he will bite their head off. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, talk about touch her and die. That is grin. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some more brooding hero recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, oh, what emoji are we gonna do today? Um, do any purple emoji in the comment section down below. I'm feeling purple. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.